Today we're going to be taking a deeper look at a scene from the 2008 Batman film The Dark Knight, directed by Christopher Nolan. In this scene, we see the police commissioner James Gordon, played by Gary Oldman, enter an interrogation room holding the film's antagonist, the Joker, played by Heath Ledger. Gordon is trying to extract information from the Joker, specifically the location of Gotham City's district attorney, Harvey Dent. The scene does a great job expanding upon the standards of the two characters we see on screen, specifically with lighting. Here we see how the Joker's person is only partially lit, emphasizing what the dialogue already sets up. The Joker is withholding information. A part of the Joker is hidden from us physically, just like the information regarding Dent and Joker's intentions, which are also hidden from us. Now look at the contrast with Gordon. His character is reinforced with a brighter lit background, symbolizing the world of organization and rules in which he lives, and yet feels trapped in. The Joker, on the other hand, resides in complete darkness. He has no rules, and he lives in complete chaos, and yet he is totally in control. This is an idea that will be toyed with and expressed more deeply with dialogue later on in the scene. If we're going to play games, mm. I'm going to need a cup of coffee. Ah, the good cop, bad cop routine? Not exactly. Gordon now leaves, and a new character is about to be introduced to the scene. As the lights flash on and Batman is revealed, watch how the camera points upwards at him. These low angle shots establish Batman's physical power over the Joker, along with a nice punch to the hand. But watch what happens next. Batman sits down, and the two are at eye level with each other as equals. Batman started out this scene on the left looking right, representing positive screen direction. The Joker looks from right to left in contrast to him. But watch how this changes. The camera begins to slowly spin around, and when we cut to Batman, he now faces from right to left in negative screen direction, and the Joker faces from left to right. This change in screen direction blurs the surety between right and wrong, and we begin to see some sense in Joker's otherwise insane ideas. The two are shot as equals and yet opposing in views and force, just in the way they face and occupy the frame. What would I do without you? Go back to ripping off mob dealers? No. No. Watch this important transition. For the first time, we get an over-the-shoulder look at Batman from the Joker's side. It's as if we have subconsciously taken Joker's side of the argument, and we see Batman as opposition. As the camera slowly pans around in the opposite direction from before, it's as if the Joker's perspectives are slowly creeping back into Batman's mind, and we are sharing the experience. At this key moment when we feel the Joker has somehow gotten into Batman's head, along with our own, the score kicks in, with the subtle and ominous feeling about it. We've dropped at the first sign of trouble. They're only as good as the world allows them to be. I'll show you. When the chips are down, these, uh, these civilized people, they'll eat each other. See, I'm not a monster. I'm just ahead of the curve. <laughs> Batman begins to lose control, and now the camera has gone handheld. The two who were just shot as equals at eye level are now in a different situation. Batman's physical prowess once again seems to prove that he is in power. But what does the camera show us? Joker is actually being shot from a slight low angle, and he even appears above Batman in the framing. The Joker is shot to be the one in power, showing how Batman's morality may actually be his weakness at least in comparison to the Joker's lawless anarchy. As Batman continues to lose control, the camera follows suit. We continue with handheld shots, and now we start applying some very distorted angles, like this one. The cuts become more frequent and rapid, just as the music becomes more and more intense and suspenseful. Now Batman is shot from a low angle, and when we cut to Joker, we see Batman taking up almost half the frame with his fists and body. The shots of Batman get closer and closer as he becomes more and more enraged. This is so interesting, because while Batman is shot to be the one in power, Joker is in complete control of the situation. The angles become more and more extreme, and we cut to a low angle shot of Batman that is almost vertical. I just love how the camera illustrates power in this scene. I think it creates a really great conflicting dynamic between our two main characters. And she's on Avenue X. That's just a little. 